this question says, according to the result derived from Gauss's law, the electric field just over the surface of a conductor in an electrostatic equilibrium is that, yeah, I think, um, and there's the considerations that go in. I think you see the derivation in the lecture. So let me just sketch the picture so that I have a statement of what it looks like. So I have some conductor and somehow I know what the charge, surface charge density there is with the conductor. So inside the conductor, let me say this is inside, outside, inside the conductor electric field is zero. And use that, apply Gauss's law, you can figure out that outside is 4 pi k is sigma. So, yeah, sigma is the surface charge density. Follow the steps below uh, to verify this result in a simple, very symmetric arrangement. Okay, uh, it says, suppose a spherical conductor of radius r, okay, has some charge q placed on it in order to keep the electric field zero within the conductor. Yeah, so it'll be... Uh, spherically symmetric uh, shell of charge. That's what it'll end up being. Uh, what is the surface charge density? Oh, so the surface charge density here should just be the amount of charge divided by the total area. Because we are thinking it's uh, uniformly distributed. So, oh, I think that is the answer. Because uh, Q, R, yeah, this is already in terms of all the known quantities. Uh, yeah, no need for a Coulomb constant yet. For a uniform electrical shell of charge, the electric field outside the shell is the same as that of the electric field due to a point charge, right? Um, so if I had uh, imagined that there being a point charge here, there would have been like electric field going out. And that would have been given by this formula. Electric field is Keq over R squared. And with the spherical shell, really the only thing that's changing is that with a spherical shell, what you have is I need a different eraser, is that you don't have electric fields inside the sphere. You just have electric field of zero in the sphere, within the sphere, and outside the sphere, still the same electric field. Um, you can prove that with the Gauss law. Um, it asks, what is the electric field just uh, outside the sphere? Oh, yeah, I think I just wrote it down. <laughs> so that's going to be Ke times Q divided by R squared. Okay. Oh, you know what? This is uh, what's called a scaffold question, I think. I need to answer these two before I have uh, the other parts that I <laughs> want to answer. So uh, the surface charge density is four, Q over 4 pi R squared. By the way, if you don't know how to type these, you should be able to find them under basic for constant or under the variables for the variables I have defined. I, I type them with the Greek letters. So here, uh, oh, I don't even need the Greek letters. I can do K sub underscore E, right arrow to get out, uh, Q divided by R squared. Uh, you also uh, the th These non-standard constants are defined as a variable. Because really, for the purpose of the system, they just need to know uh, what you're typing in. So I have that. Wait, well, I feel like it's missing something. Uh, verify this result. I mean, okay. Um, I mean, you can <laughs> finish up with, if you do sigma divided by epsilon naught, you get that. But I thought there was another part to it. I, I, sorry, it seems a little incomplete, but that's the question. You can see that in this nice symmetric setup, uh, take the charge density divided by epsilon naught, or charge, take the charge density, multiply by 4 pi Coulomb constant, then that gets you the electric field. I feel like there should be more parts. <laughs> Let's move on to the next slide. Um, okay, it says this. Now, um, with uh, I think this and the next few questions, you can uh, look up the formula in the textbook 
for you know what is the electric field due to a long thin uh, wire of charge. Let me use this opportunity to illustrate application of Gauss's law, because the wonderful thing about Gauss application of Gauss's law to find the electric field is that it's so simple once you know how to do it that it doesn't take long. You can do it really quickly. So. Let me, without looking up any formulas, uh, let me just uh, use Gauss's law. So the one formula I need is Gauss's law. I need to uh, have uh, the electric flux around the surface enclosing a charge is, is related to the charge enclosed in this simple way. 4 pi times Coulomb constant times charge enclosed. Um, and this is the way I've been trying to do it in lecture. Your textbook will show this as Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Just to remember, you know, uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, the way your textbook states Coulomb's law is equal to Coulomb constant. Like this identity will help you convert between the two. So I need the Gauss's law. So I'll use that. The, for the setup, it says a very long thin wire has uniform linear charge density of that. Okay, so let me just draw a representation of thin line of charge. There's some linear charge density of some amount of charge per length, amount of charge per unit length. Uh, it's asking what is the electric field at a distance d from the wire. So imagine you are looking at this point that's at distance d. So when you're trying to use Gauss's law to find the electric field, the very first thing to do is um, uh, kind of come up with a useful Gaussian surface. And the property of Gaussian surface that makes it useful is that it allows you to say either that in this whole E dot dA that E is constant, you might be able to argue that somehow. If you can argue that, then you can pull this out of integral and solve for it. That's one. And in the case of a spherical symmetry, that's how it exactly how it works out. But with the other symmetry, sometimes other geometry, sometimes it works out where um, you can't say that for the entirety of closed surface. So in this case, you know, with the, uh, this kind of cylindrical symmetry. You can say that, oh, if I have a cylinder that's uh, surrounding this so, so, surrounding this line at a radius d, then you can say, oh, yeah, so over this side surface of the cylinder, I can argue that the electric field from this linear charge, that I have some intuitive feel for how the electric field should look like, that um, I can make that exact argument that electric field at any of these points are equal in magnitude, and you're looking at the direction of your area element vector, and you can see that uh, the dot product is simple, magnitude of electric field is constant, so you can pull it out. The challenge here is that this is not a closed surface. It's not closed surface until you close it up somehow, maybe by adding the basis at the end. And, and on those surfaces, you can't argue that electric field is still constant over that, those base. So in those cases, you're looking for the second feature where this dot product will somehow go to zero because of the relative direction between electric field and the area element. And that's exactly what you have here if you choose to use this surface to close up this volume and use this closed cylinder as your Gaussian surface. Because along this surface, your area element goes this way. So it kind of doesn't matter what the value of electric field is. You do have the sense that the electric field is pointed this way. So the dot product will be zero. So, um, so once you make that argument and use this as a closed surface of some closed uh, Gaussian surface of some height, H, a cylinder of a height H with a, a circular base of the, uh, radius D, then, uh, then, then you are all set up to apply Gauss's law and find the electric field. So in applying Gauss's law, 
uh, you work with both left and the right hand side. So the left hand side, I have that. So I need to write it out. Um, so for the side surface, what I have is uh, so integral of the electric field at the distance d along the side surface. Uh, that product with uh, and the that product will just you know the cosine of zero it'll give me one so just times the area element of da and i've made the argument that this is constant which allows me to pull this out of the integral once i've done that then i have this the electric field at the distance d that's constant throughout the entire surface integral of da and this is where the magic happens. Um, <laughs> we are pretending to do an integral, but once we get to this point, we realize, oh, I don't have to do any integral. I know what the surface area of the side surface of a cylinder is. I need this circumference, uh, 2 pi d times I need this height. Because when you unroll it, it's all rectangular. That times height will give me the uh, surface area. So I don't actually need to do the integral. So that's the left-hand side of Gauss's law. We say that's equal to the right-hand side, 4 pi Coulomb constant times charge enclosed. So 4 pi Coulomb constant times, and you need to work out an expression for the charge enclosed. Um, I'm enclosing this much amount of charge. I have the charge density. If I multiply that with the, the length of the wire that's enclosed, that'll give me the total charge. So the charge density times the length. And that's where you see this nice cancellation of an arbitrary parameter that I did want to get rid of somehow. And it looks like they cancel out in the derivation. So I think I have everything. I just need to solve for this. And solving for that, I get electric field at distance d is equal to all of that divided by this, oh, uh, pi's cancel, and one factor of this cancels to two. So I have two Coulomb constant times lambda, uh, I still have this d, over d. So that's, uh, that's the answer. Um, yeah, and I think, so we are um, <laughs> kind of, uh, let me plug in number here and the uh, next uh, two questions I want. Because uh, we are in that part of the semester where uh, if I plug, uh, I'm not going to be able to plug in numbers for everything. So I'll run out of time plugging in numbers. <laughs> let me just plug in numbers here. Two times. Oh, I think I have Coulomb constant finally memorized. It's 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 in the basic SI unit times the 50 microcoulomb, so 50 times 10 to the power of minus 6 um, divided by meter. Um, so that's the charge density divided by the distance, uh, 2 centimeters, which is 0 0.02 meters. So I have that, 44, uh, oh, so part of 3, 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 6, 10 to the power 7. Okay, so it's 4.495 times 10 to the power of 7. So 4.495. And I do like plugging in answers to make sure I didn't make any mistakes, <laughs> but uh, this is around the time in the semester when I will uh, not always plug in numbers into the actual version of the question because uh, I've tried that before and I, and I run out of time. <laughs> So let me look at this question. Yeah, so I think let me just make sure. Yeah, looking to, at these two questions. So yeah, I think especially if I don't plug in numbers, then I have enough time to do these two questions. Because again, Gauss's law, once you know how to apply, it's super quick. It doesn't involve complicated algebra, just this, um, thinking through uh, the, a visual image of the setup. So it says, a uh, large sheet of charge has a uniform charge density, okay, of um, some charge density, yeah, charge per area. What is the electric field due to this charge at a point just above the surface of the sheet? Okay. 
again, this is one of those things where you can look up the formula. I think I have it memorized. Electric field to a uniform uh, plane is uh, there's a factor of two that you should remember sigma over two epsilon. Naught. This is the version I have memorized. So I have to write it down before I can write down this one. So you could just look up the formula if you want to, but I would encourage you to try applying Gauss's law yourself to drive it on the spot because uh, it's uh, um, the theory of electromagnetism is really uh, the for people who love physics. Um, this is the kind of the archetypal um, physical physics theory, and it's uh, beautiful. It's uh, it's got all the things that. Uh, proper physics theory should have, and I uh, think <laughs> for you to miss out on that. So, okay, you have a plane of charge of some uniform charge than sigma. So we're going to use Gauss's law to try to find an expression for electric field. And again, Gauss's law says that when you calculate uh, electric flux or over a closed surface, so e dot d over a closed surface, that's equal to 4 pi Coulomb constant times amount of charge enclosed. So whenever you have a situation where you're trying to use Gauss's law to drive electric field, um, you're trying to look for enough symmetry that for all the surfaces you are enclosing, you are able to say one or two things about this quantity here. In the E dot DA, you can either say that uh, e is a constant uh, over the surface or over some segment of surface so that for that portion you can pull this electric field out or for surfaces where you can't do that you want to be able to say that this is somehow zero because you know from the symmetry of the setup that um, electric field and area element is perpendicular for those parts and this is where the practice with the drawing electric field lines is helpful because that's the kind of practice that allows you to say based on symmetry what the direction of the electric field is and in what kind of direction does uh, whether electric field varies or not. So, um, so, so from the symmetry here, I have some sense that if I move along this direction, if I move parallel to the plane, of charge, then electric field won't be changing. So I have surfaces like that uh, above and below that can be useful in satisfying this condition. I can say electric field is constant over the surface. Now, the challenge is that these are open surfaces. They are not closed. You need to close them up before you can use them in your Gauss's law derivation. And uh, I've lectured this before. The way to close it up is by closing it, imagining um, kind of a cylindrical thing or a pillbox type of surface where you have uh, basically areas top and bottom. And at least to start, I recommend setting them as um, equal distance so that you can make the symmetry argument that on both of these surfaces, electric field magnet is a uniform. And once you make that argument, then you see that for these side surfaces, the surface area element is perpendicular. It's that way. So it's perpendicular to the electric field. So you can say that this integral over the side surface will be zero. So when you are actually doing the integral, the only part of the surface that contributes non-zero uh, flux is these top and bottom surfaces. So with all that, I can write this out. So the left-hand side, looks like the, um, so this is the integral over the top and bottom. And you can see that the dot product is simple. So it's just gonna be the magnitude of the electric field at distance d times dA. And I've made the verbal argument how electric field is constant over both top and bottom surface. The magnitude is constant. So I can pull this out of the integral that's the whole point of making that argument. Then you get the electric field over the top times the integral over the top and bottom surfaces of dA. Oh, then, um, so if these top and bottom surfaces I picked, if they have area A, then um, 
then so this integral that I've been pretending to do, I don't actually do it. I can say, oh, it's a twice the area. I have the top surface and I have the bottom surface. <laughs> so uh, th this will be a common theme whenever you're applying Gauss's law. You start out pretending that you're going to do the integral and you find excuses not to do it. That's the left-hand side. That should be equal to the right-hand side, all this, 4 pi Coulomb constant times. I need to write down a charge enclosed. So I know surface charge density. So this surface is going to be enclosing a surface uh, of the charged plane that looks like this. So I guess for charge enclosed, I need a sigma times the area of this thing. So sigma times area. And once you write it down, you see beautiful cancellation. Areas cancel which is what we are shooting for because it's kind of an arbitrary parameter. I purposefully drew it arbitrarily to just demonstrate how arbitrary it is. And you know, arbitrary parameters, sometimes you come up with them so that you can walk through the derivation and as you're walking through, you're hoping it'll cancel out, like a mass canceling out from a lot of physics 4A questions when you're dealing with the gravity. So I think I have enough to just write out my electric field at distance d. It's going to be all of this, 4 pi Coulomb constant times sigma divided by the sole remaining survivor of the other left hand side. So 2 pi k sigma. And yeah, that's the formula that I had memorized. Um, but uh, the, I guess the benefit of knowing how to apply Gauss's law is. Well, I, I don't know if that's that big of a benefit. Because there are really only three situations where you can apply it. I guess it's useful if you have, instead of a plane of charge, if you have a slab. Like if you have a slab and you're trying to derive the electric field in all the regions, then it's a lot easier if you can go through this exact argument and modify it to a slab, not a plane. Um, so plug in the numbers and you should get, you know, account for power of 10 <laughs> and that should be right all right so i think i had one more question Wait, did i yeah i did um we are out of time um and i don't know if i want to do it um yeah yeah i, I won't do this one i will tell you it's relatively easy because you can basically use the result from the other question when you have two parallel plates, equal and opposite charges, uh, what that does is that you are setting up positive charges here, which will give you electric fields going this way. And you are setting up negative charges here, uh, which will give you electric fields going this way. And uh, with the electric field being constant as a function of distance, what this does is that in between, these two contributions add together. So you end up getting magnitude of electric field in between region that's, uh, well, I guess I can write that, <laughs> that's equal to uh, double that. So four pi k is sigma. And outside, here it's a zero, here it's a zero, because the, these contributions, these contributions cancel out opposite directions equal magnitude, opposite directions equal magnitude, they cancel out, so you get zero electric field outside. So um, so with that, you can here you can just plug in the number, 4 pi k epsilon sigma. So, oh wait, sigma you'll have to calculate from the amount of charge uh, and the, the parameters for the area. Yeah, let me do it this way. Uh, so I think I can just, uh, without reworking all the expressions, I can do this on stage math fairly quickly, I think. So 4 pi times Coulomb constant, 8.99 times 10 to the power of minus 9. <laughs> Not 9, <laughs> 10 to the power of 9. Um, times um, surface charge density, which will be the amount of charge, 5.3 times 10 to the power of minus 9 Coulomb. Uh, how far they are apart, that doesn't matter. Really, this number is Im only important to give you the idea that you are in the region where you can use infinite plane approximation. So charge divided by the area. 
11 centimeters, so that's 0 0.11 meters squared. I think they are square shaped. Charged by by area, okay, good. Yeah, so that will give you the electric field. I got that pi, so let me just put that to number, uh, decimal approximation. Okay. So, uh, and I need to express times 10 to the power of 4. So what I can do is I can take this number and divide it by 10 to the power of 4. That will give me the matissa, 4.95. So yeah, that's it. Um, so yeah, I think that's all the questions.